Gabby Petito failed. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. Back in 2021, I undertook a comprehensive analysis of the circumstances surrounding the days prior to the disappearance and death of Gabby Petito. I provided a detailed breakdown of the body cam footage that was provided showing the interaction between Gabby Petito, Brian Laundrie and the police to enable you to understand more about the responses of the individuals concerned to understand them through the relevant prisms of a narcissist and a victim of a narcissist. If you haven't watched those videos, I very much encourage you to do so because it provides you with so much fantastic analysis of the behaviours so that you can see the way that a narcissist behaves, the way that a victim of a narcissist behaves, and also calls into question some of the conduct of the relevant police officers with regard to their treatment of the couple, what they were witnessing, and how they might have done something differently if they had an awareness of the dynamic that takes place between a narcissist and his or her victim. I very much encourage you to go and watch those videos. All you need to do is search for Gabby Petito and it will come up. There is a playlist in relation to all of those circumstances. There's also an analysis of Brian Laundrie's behaviour uh, that surrounded his death and you'll find all of that very insightful and instructive. It's come back into the headlines, the circumstances of Gabby Petito's death, with an article from Mail Online by Lewis Pennock, which tells us, Gabby Petito's parents release her heartbreaking selfie of beaten and bruised face moments before tearful traffic stop with Brian Laundrie as they sue Utah cops for failing to protect her from killer. A selfie taken by murdered blogger Gabby Petito, shows her with a bruised face, moments before police responded to a 911 call that said she'd been attacked by her boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. The picture was shared by lawyers for Gabby's family, who are building a lawsuit against police in Utah. Gabby, 22, was strangled by Laundrie in Wyoming during a road trip in the summer of 2021. The timestamp on the selfie shows it was taken at 4.37pm on August 12th, 2021. This, of course, is clear evidence of physical violence, and you can see from the picture itself that she has marks all around and across her eye and on her forehead, probably commensurate with having been punched or slapped. Minutes after that timestamp, a witness called 911 and said they'd just seen Laundry attack Gabby in a parking lot. Gabby has tears in her eyes and a bloody red bruise around her eye. Attorneys for her family claim officers who responded to the incident ignored her injuries. They also ignored a whole lot more, and if you watch my breakdown of the body cam footage you can see the various mistakes they made in terms of not picking up on what she was saying and doing and also with regard to his behavior attorneys for her family claim officers who responded to the incident ignored her injuries they say the police's failure to take proper steps to protect gabby contributed to her murder later that month G gabby's family has filed a 50 million dollar wrongful death lawsuit against Moab Police Department, alleging that officers failed to properly handle the 911 call after a witness claimed he saw laundry hitting Gabby and trying to steal her phone just weeks before her death. Physical violence, assertion of control, absence of emotional empathy, lack of boundary recognition, asset appropriation. The lawsuit names the department, two officers who responded to the call and two former leaders. Commenting after the release of the pictures, Brian Stewart at the law firm of Parker and McConkie said, Moab police failed to listen to Gabby, failed to investigate her injuries and the seriousness of her assault, and failed to follow their own training, policies and Utah law. Police body cam footage of their response to the incident 
shows Gabby wearing the same clothes as in the selfie. She told officers, laundry grabbed my face. Physical assault, assertion of control, likely as a consequence of ignition of fury. And gestures to show them how she was attacked. An officer asks, did he slap your face or what? Gabby replies, he grabbed me with his nail. And I guess that's why it looks, I definitely have a cut right here. I can feel it. When I touch it, it burns. Police reportedly didn't pursue the matter further after Gabby said she struck laundry first. Utah Code says any attempt to cover a victim's mouth or nose is defined as strangulation, which should be treated as aggravated assault, the Salt Lake Tribune reported. The officers instead treated the incident as disorderly conduct, and the couple were separated for the night, with Gabby staying in their van while Laundrie stayed in Moab. Laundrie shot himself in the head a month after Gabby's body was discovered in the Bridgeteton National Forest. Last year, the families came to a $3 million settlement in the Petito family's wrongful death lawsuit against Brian Laundrie's estate. In January, a Florida judge approved a request to add Laundrie's former attorney, Steve Bertolino, to a lawsuit against his parents, brought by Gabby's family. Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt initially filed the lawsuit against Christopher and Robert, Roberta Laundrie earlier this year, claiming the couple knew that their son murdered Gabby and refused to tell them the location of her remains. Their lawsuit also accuses the Laundries of trying to arrange a way for their son to flee the county, as well as accusing lawyer Bertolino of knowing that Gabby was dead when he made a statement about the search for her. On September the 14th, 2021, Bertolino issued a statement on behalf of Laundrie's parents to the media. At a time, Gabby's parents say they knew Laundrie had killed her. Bertolino said the Laundrie family hoped the search for Miss Petito is successful and that Miss Petito is reunited with her family. Pat Riley, who is representing Petito and Schmidt, says the statement made by Bertolino is outrageous. The original lawsuit alleged that Laundrie's parents were aware that their son had killed Gabby and were not being forthcoming. A statement, released, a statement released last month by Petito's parents said when they did choose to speak, it was through statements issued by Stephen Bertolino. Accordingly, the matter rumbles on. Notwithstanding the death of Gabby Petito and the suicide of Brian Laundrie, with the police department being sued, but it does show that if there had been a better understanding of the dynamic of such behaviours, or even a rudimentary understanding of a controlling individual, that the police may well have responded in a different manner. Of course, my breakdown shows you how the victim of the narcissist has responded, notwithstanding, of course, there were certain individuals that trolled Gabby Petito by suggesting that she was the aggressor and that she got what she deserved. If you want to understand why people adopt such a mentality, watch my video, The Online Troll. But this case, resurrected as a consequence of this lawsuit, is another opportunity to help you understand the way in which narcissism functions, to understand an excellent breakdown, and also to see the ways in which people miss narcissism in action, when actually they ought to be able to pick up on it, because the consequences of not doing so, in this case, were fatal. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.